Hello, welcome to lecture 14. Today I am going to talk about probability. This is mathematics for class 9 based on NCRT syllabus. My name is Sangam Banerjee and my details are given below. So let us start with an example of tossing a coin. So when you toss a coin either you get tail or you get a head. Heads are some, this is lion heads or in some other countries some leaders heads are also given. So this head and where numerals are there tails. Well, sometimes some coins are confusing but then let us take our Indian coin this is 10 and this is head so let us toss a coin and one gets either a head or tails so if you start tossing the coin in the first toss okay take one coin only you get head and tail so suppose you get head again you toss it a second toss you can either again get head or tail so similarly if you have a tail in the second toss you can get head or a tail so we will discuss this in the next few slides. Let us continue and if you have a die, okay, this is a die, okay, a singular is called a die and plural is called a dice. So let us roll a die, one gets either this, either on top face you get one or two, so there are six possibilities. So if you have, here there are two possibilities, here there are six possibilities. So it becomes more complicated, you either in the first roll you get one, then again you roll it, you can get again six combination, in the first roll you can get either six and this is how it is branching, okay. So you have more sample space can be written as, this is how, this is suppose, this is one, comma one means this, then one, comma two is this, one, comma three is this, okay. So these are the things, suppose we get two, comma 6, suppose you get 3 and 4, you write 3, comma 4, okay, and so on and so forth. So coming back to the coin example, so I start a toss, okay, I get head or tail. So I continue it, second toss, third toss with the same, fourth toss. So you can have the more toss you give, so head, 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 three heads, or head, head, tail. But if you have four head, 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 and head, so here I have written 4 H. There are three H's and T. So you have all these combinations. Okay. So there are, how are these combinations? In the first trial you have two. In a, so probability of getting either one head or one tail is one by two. And suppose you have to get one head and one tail. You will have four such events. H, H or H, T or T, H, T, H. So probability of getting any one of these combinations will be 1 by 4. Number of outcomes are 4, that is 2 square, this is 2, 2 to the power 1. And the third, you will have 2 to the power 3, 8 combinations you can get. So probability of getting any one of this event is 1 by 8. Our fourth trial, if you do, it is 16 of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, like this, you count it, you have 16 of them, it's 2 to the power 4. So probability of getting any one of this event is 1 by 8. 16 and for nth it will be 2 to the power n that probability will be 1 by 2 to the power n so this is true for distinguishable coins if tossed simultaneously instead of sequentially so this is true if suppose you take simultaneously you take two coins this is one coin if i take two coins either you'll get head head or you'll get head tail okay suppose simultaneously you toss three coins so you can get eight combinations okay so similarly, if you toss four coins simultaneously. So this is true for distinguishable coin if tossed simultaneously instead of sequentially. So you can take distinguishable coin. So here we have three head and one tail, which I can distinguish from say three head and one tail. Okay, the sequence. So this is true for distinguishable coin if tossed simultaneously instead of sequentially. And sum of all the probability all events should be equal to one. That is, this is probability of getting one head or tail is half and you have two such events. So if you sum them, half plus half is one. So similarly for the second toss, you have four such events. So probability of getting each event is one by four. So if you add four times, four into one by four is one. Similarly, for the third toss, you have eight events, okay? So one, and the probability is one by eight. So if you add one by eight times eight, then you get one again. So now what is the probability of getting one head and one tail if the coins are indistinguishable? So either you toss two coins or you toss sequentially. 
so that is one head and one tail so each is one by four so the probability so i add this so the probability of getting one head and one tail will be half one by four plus one by four is equal to half if head tail and tail head is considered to be same okay so similarly what is the probability that the three indistinguishable coins or three trials by the same coin sequentially either i can toss simultaneously three indistinguishable distinguishable coins or i can do sequentially one after another one two three this is one event have the outcome of two heads and one tail so you have two heads so you ha can have this combination okay head head tail or head tail head or tail head two heads and one tail so the to probability of getting this two heads and one tail is 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by this 3 by 8 so similarly for in the rolling of a die okay you roll a die here as I mentioned earlier, this is the sample space. These are all the events, two die or a single die thrown twice. So this is the trial. The first trial, you can get six different events and the probability of getting each of them is one by six. In the second trial, if you do, you will have so many combinations. So six, this each has six, six into six is 36, six square, one by 36. If you, I have not drawn the third trial, so if you, you will get 6 to the power 3, that is 216, and the probability of getting each of, you know, if you take branch and each sequence will be 216, and the nth will be 6 to the power n, or probability will be 1 by 6 to the power n. So these probabilities are for the distinguishable die, and if it is indistinguishable die, so now what is the probability of getting 1, 4 and 1, 2 if the dies are indistinguishable? So here you see 1, 4, 2 or 2, 4. But if they are indistinguishable, then each event is the probability is 1 by 36. So you have to add 1 by 36 plus 1. So it is the probability is 2 by oh, 36. And similarly, what is the probability of 3 dies or 3 trial, trials by the same die? Either you can toss three dice simultaneously or you can do three trials by the same die. And what is the probability that you will get four, four and two? If they are indistinguishable, then you add these probabilities. That is probability of getting this is one by two, one six. Probability of getting this is again same. And this is also the same thing. So if you add it, it is three by 126. So here we see that the probability becomes smaller if the outcomes are larger. Suppose for a die you have more outcome than the coin. So the probability becomes uh, smaller. That's for a, a coin it was 1 by 2. Here it is probability is 1 by 6. And as you increase this order, okay, second trial or a third trial or two dies or a three dies. So this will become probability of getting one particular uh, required event will be smaller and smaller. So we saw probability of three coins or three trials by the same coin having the outcome of two head and one tail as three by eight. Okay. And uh, however, it is not true experimented. That is, if you do eight trials only, you will not get three times two head and one trial. So this is theoretically. Okay. But experimentally, it doesn't mean that you do eight trials and you will get three times two head and one tail. So what you have to do to obtain externally this value of 3 by 8, one has to conduct large number of trials. So as the number of trial increases, the experimental probability will converge to the theoretical value. So that tree which I have shown about tossing or uh, about rolling a die, that is theoretically we can say, okay, this is uh, what the probability should be. But if you do in real life practice, you will not get this number. You have to do the trial many times and how to go about doing it we will see in the next few slides so example is let us consider a single coin tossed many times okay i take a single coin and i have tossed many times so suppose i am uh, tossing you know 15 times here okay so i get three times head and 12 times tail okay so cumulative number of head is three divided by total number of time the coin is tossed is 15. So the probability of getting here head is 3 by 15 and getting tail is 12 by 15. But this is nowhere near to 
what we are expecting we were expecting half ratio should be near to half but you are not getting near to so i increase the number of trials okay i add, again add another 15 trials so now i have 15 plus 15 30 trials and i get say in the second round i get seven heads and eight tails so now i do i add it this seven plus three ten divided by 30 and this is 8 plus 12 8 plus 12 is 20 so, so now if you again do third trial you will see slowly this is approaching to 1 by 2 okay they are converging both are converging so as the cumulative number of trial is increased the cumulative number of outcome event of h and head and tails are coming closer to each other okay thus the ratio that is cumulative number of head or tail divided by cumulative number of trials tend towards half okay so as you increase it this ratio will tend towards half so what is a trial a trial is an action which results in an outcome that is number of times a coin is tossed or number of time a dice is rolled okay these are the num the is called a trial getting a head in a particular toss is an event with outcome head similarly getting a tail is an event with outcome tail so an event for an experiment is a collection of some outcome of experiments. So these are the definition where you will be, you know, reading these terms, trial, events, outcome. So this is for you to understand what it means. And so empirically or experimentally probability of an event happening is given by number of trials in which an event happened. Like if I have tossed 50 times, say 10 times I get head. So probability of getting head is 10 divided by 20, that is half. Okay, generally it doesn't happen like that. It will be always there will be some random fluctuations. The experimentally the probability you can obtain by doing large number of trials and you write the total number of trials what you have done here and whatever event you get. So that is the probability of that particular event. So that's why you write P of E. And examples, let us see, a coin is tossed thousand times with the following frequencies. Heads you get, in thousand you get 455 and tails you get 545. So total of this will be 1000, okay. So compute the probability of each event. So this event will be 455 by 1000 of getting head and probability of getting tail is 545 by 1000, okay. So this is what I have written here, probability of getting head is number of heads, 455 by 1000. So the probability is 455 and the probability of getting tail is 0.545, okay, divided by 1000 this is. So probability of getting head plus probability of getting tail, the so probability of all the events should be equal to, if you add all the event probability, you should get equal to 1. So this if you add them, you will get 1, okay. 5 plus 5, 0, then 5 plus 9 plus 1, 10, then 4 plus 5, 10, so 1 you will get it. Another example, two coins are tossed simultaneously 500 times. Now we get two heads 105 times. Okay, this is event one. We get one head, that is one head and one tail. This is event two, 275 times. That is no heads, that means both are tails, 120 times. Find the probability of occurrence of each of these events. So if you add this 105 plus 275 plus 120, you should get 500. So this event is 105 by 500, this event 2 is 275 by 500, this event 3 is 120 divided by 500, that is 2 tails, the probability is 120 divided by 500. So here what I have written, P of E1 is, is tending to 0 0.25, is, see 105 divided by 0.2 and this is 275 because one head, I do not know which one, suppose you have two coins whether coin A or B, doesn't matter. So that's why it got double, you see. 0 0.25 is the probability of getting each event. So here you are considering both. You are merging both the events. So you are getting 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 is half. So is half. And probability of getting no heads, that is only tails, is 0 0.25, okay. So here also if you add all of them, in principle this, this is the experimental value. This is of course, we are expecting, okay, if I increase from 500 times to maybe say 10,000 times, this will oh, will uh, come close to 0.25, this will go down to 0.5, this will go up to 
So dip, if you increase the number of trial, you will slowly come to theoretical value. But anyways, even in this, if you add it experimentally also, you should get one. You will generally get one. Next example, a die is thrown thousand times with the frequencies for the outcome. This You have six phases, one, two, three, four, five, six are given in the following table. So this is the given following table. So okay, event one, event two, six event and outcomes are one, two, three, four, five, six. And the frequency of getting one is in this thousand times, 179. Phase two is 150 times, phase three is 157 times. So if you add all of them, this frequency, you should get this total number of trial. So here probability of getting this is 179 of getting one. Okay, on the face where only single dot is there, is this similarly face with two dots, this is the probability and so on and so forth. Okay, so note that the probability of each event lies between 0 and 1. So it lies between 0 and 1. So each, this probability tends towards, if you see, you check it 1 by 6, you check it, it will tends to 1 by 6. Okay, so now suppose if I make it, it may not be exactly 1 by 6, but if I increase this number of trial, it will slowly tends to 1 by 6. And the sum of all the probabilities is 1. You add all these probabilities, you will get it to 1. It, is, it has to be, okay? And uh, this events covers all the possible outcome, okay? It covers all the possible outcome. Hmm? And uh, another exercise, this is again taken from your book. Mostly I have taken all the examples from your book so that you can go back to your book and read it since it is for the ninth standard syllabus. It will be easy for you. I could have taken some other examples, but I tried to avoid it. An insurance company selected 2000 driver at random, that is without any preference of one driver over other. Fine. In a particular city to find a relationship between age and accident. Okay, that how, the, what is the relation between their age? Uh, young people will drive very fast, so their accident rates may be, and the old drivers may drive slowly. Maybe. Let us see from the data. The data obtained are given in the following table. So what are the data given? This is the age of the driver, 18 to 29, 30 to 50, above 50. And this is accident in one year, so zero time accident. This is zero accident. This is one accident. More number of people are making, you see. 18 to 29, 160 accident. Then at the age 30 to 50, 125 accident, and above 50 is 45 accident. Similarly, uh, two accidents, uh, this is uh, for two accidents, this age 110, and this age is 60, and above 60. And three accidents, again this is 61, for this age is 22. And over three, this is the one, 35 more than three accidents they are making okay so this is the data given to you You have collected this data and let us analyze this data question it asks find the probability of the following event for a driver chosen at random from the city being 18 to 20 age and having exactly three accidents what is the probability 18 to 29 this is 61 okay so 61 by 2000 is the probability for this this uh, age 18 to 29 being 30 to 50 years of age, this 30 to 50 years, and having one or more accidents in a year. So one or more, this one or more, two, three. So you add all of them. So if you add all of them, you have 225 by 2000. So probability is, and having no accident in one year, means you consider all age. What is the probability that there will be no accidents? So it is, you add all of them, 1305 is a 0.6. Again, this exercise I have taken it from your textbook for your convenience. The first one is in a cricket match, a batswoman hits a boundary six times out of 30 balls she plays. Find the probability that she did not hit a boundary. So the probability will be 24 times he did not, she did not hit the boundary. So 24 by 30 will be the answer, okay? So that is four by five is the probability. And 1,500 families with two children were selected randomly and the following data were recorded. Number of girls in a family, so this many, 1,500 families were taken. So oh, how many number of girls? Each family had uh, two girls, 475 families. Only one girl, 814 families had. 
and zero girls 211 family that if you add all of them you should get 1500 okay so what is the probability compute the probability of family chosen at random having two girls so having two girls is 475 divided by 1500 is total number so if you cancel you know you can cancel this divide by 595 this is 5 300 and then again you divide by 5 19 so that is 19 minutes and <coughs> probability of one girl is 814 divided by this and similarly zero girl is 211 you can simplify it further if you can and uh, next example is three coins are tossed simultaneously 200 times with the following frequencies of different outcomes okay three coins are tossed so three heads 23 times you get two heads and one tail that is 72 times one head and two tails 77 times no head at all that is all three tails so these are the thing so if the three coins are simultaneously tossed again compute the probability of the of two heads coming up so what is the probability of getting two heads now you have done this you have got 72 times so probability will be 72 divided by 200 because you know the probabilities for each event is for this event three head is 23 by 200 for this is 72 by 200 this is one head is 77 by 200 28 by 200 so you have been asked what is the probability that you will get two heads so almost this one so probability of getting two heads is 72 by then 9 by 25 and sum of all these frequencies should be equal to number of this is total number of tosses okay 200 okay another example 11 bags of wheat flour each mark 5 kg actually contain the following weights of flour in kilogram so this is there are how many bags are the 11 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and this is 4.97 first bag so find the probability that any of these bags chosen random contains more than 5 kg that is more than 5 kg so there are two of them are 5 kg you don't consider that more than 5 so i consider 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so probability of getting uh, if you select randomly of getting more than 5 kg 7 by 11 but if the problem was asked more than or equal to 5 kg then it will be 9 by 11 okay so now we have uh, finished this uh, ch uh, chapter also let us summarize so in this chapter you have studied the following point an event of an experiment is collection of some outcome of the experiment which we have said the empirical or experimental probability p of an event is given by which we have shown and we have given the argument how to get this formula and always the probability of any event lies between 0 and 1 0 and 1 is inclusive okay sometimes probability can be 0 also there is no improbable thing okay and sometimes it is going to happen probability is one this i finish the chapter on probability uh, next lecture we will talk uh, based on your appendix chapter and thank you see you in the next